Today is Saturday, February 5th, 2022. Boy, when you say 2022, that sounds like the future, doesn't it? That doesn't sound like today. 2022? Are you kidding me? What we have here is a piece of vaulted weeping birch. This comes to us from Dave at Calmwood Creations. Let's talk about this piece and see how we can use it. I just don't see any good way to mount this and, and take advantage of this uh, branch coming off of the main section. So what I'm going to do, I don't want to waste it, of course. So I'm going to take it over to my bandsaw and I'm going to cut it this way, square with the end of the branch so that I get two parallel sides or ends and then I can make maybe a vase out of that at a, at a later date. And then I'm going to make another bandsaw cut and I'm going to cut all this bark off. What? Cut the bark off? Are you nuts, Phil? I know. I, I know. I might be. This is such a problem for me. I, I like to use all of the wood, you know, when I can. I like to use it the way that it's presented to me, like this. I just can't see how to incorporate the branch. So I'm going to make a bandsaw cut, at least one, probably two. And not wanting to waste wood, see if I, if I leave these edges square, I can get nearly a 13 inch bowl out of this piece, corner to corner. If I turn the whole thing around, it's going to be about a 9 inch bowl. And that just seems like kind of a waste to me. On the other hand, it has this beautiful spalting in it, and quite a bit of it. So I think it's I think we'll let the wood speak for itself on this one and not go with a live edge. But, you know, things can change. But I'm thinking this is going to be the top. And that means no live edge. Let me go make some bandsaw cuts and I'll be back. Let's take a look at what we got out of the bandsaw cuts. This is the first cut I made. I cut that branch off. I can see this being a, a vase, maybe with this being the base of it and this being the top of it. Could could go this way, but not likely. Maybe keep that top profile just the way it is and use this for a stem. Go ahead and turn away the bark down this way on the bottom part of the stem, but maybe leave the bark around the underside of what will be the top. And then I made this second cut to uh, flatten off the what will be the bottom of the piece. So this is a scrap, but it's a beautiful scrap, and it will get used. Not quite sure how, but it'll get used. It'll be a nice shallowish dish, I think. And then today's project. This will be the bottom. See how the spalting is in the bottom? And there is no spalting or very little in what will be the top. So this way we'll cut through the top. This will be the bowl, the top of the bowl. And as we go down, we should hit that spalting so that we see the spalting from the inside and you can see some on the side there and of course on this side and a little bit over here. I'm excited to turn a round bowl because of the spalting and what will probably be some pretty beautiful colors and grain. Nice colors in there and maybe I'll get to polish it up like some guys get to do on their round bowls that I just can't do on my odd shaped stuff because I can't get the speed up to polish. So we'll see how that part goes. I don't know. But I'm kind of looking forward to uh, turning something simple yet beautiful. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to turn this round before I chicken out. It's just going to be round, that's all. I'm going to use a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. We're going to be turning a 500 RPM mask and face shield on. Yahoo! It's been a while. Okay, I think we got it. Yep, fully round. Lots of beautiful spalting. We'll move over here to this corner and start working on some sort of design. I don't see where I can really do much. You know, it's just round, so I don't know what I can do with it. I'm not familiar with round. Let's see about the speed. How about 750? I 
need to uh, flatten off the bottom here because it's giving me a hard time. Isn't that gorgeous? What kind of design? I don't know what to do with the round thing. Let me think about it a bit. The piece is quite punky in, in areas. Uh, I just tried a couple of test cuts and then I went over and sharpened up. I'm going to try a couple more. I'm coming from this way, I seem to be, be able to get a little better cut. Still not quite done turning. I've got this right here. I'm going to see if I can't clean this up a little bit and then probably put sanding sealer on it and let it set overnight. And that should harden up some of that punkiness. Let's see. Let's see how I can do here. Oh yeah, I turned the speed up to about a thousand RPM as well. Just a smidge in there. So see that's a case of uh, the piece dictating the shape because I'm trying to get rid of this. Now I didn't have to do this but in, in trying to get rid of it I've developed a shape that seems to work for me. I don't know if it works for you. I kind of like it. I think that's as much as I'm going to do and then I'll take care of the rest of it from the bottom. So I'll, I'll come in here like this across the bottom. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot less punky and that's a good thing. Boy, this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of wood. I'm just tickled about that. Okay, we'll mark out for a tenon. Unless we should do a recess. A lot of people want me to do more recesses and they ask why I don't. And a lot of times I don't because there's cracks in the piece and you don't want to open your jaws into a recess and spread those cracks apart. This piece has no cracks that I've seen yet. No cracks, no bug holes, lots of spalting. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of wood. So I could put a recess in here instead of a tenon. I'm not sure why <laughs> everybody seems to want me to do that. I like a tenon because I think it's stronger. And yes, I understand there is an argument either way on that. I get it. Uh, people tend to like to leave recesses. And to be honest, I don't like to leave them. I like to remove them. I don't always. Sometimes I get a little lazy. Anyway, so I think I'm done turning. And what I'm going to do now is put sanding sealer all over the whole thing. Soak it in real good and let it set overnight. And I'll be back at this tomorrow. And that should, uh, that should solidify a lot of this punkiness and make it easier to turn and sand. So I don't know if I'll show you that. It's, I'm just going to brush it on there real heavy and let it set. Uh, yeah, I won't show you that. You don't care. I'm just going to brush it on. I'll see you tomorrow. You know, I think I put about a pint of uh, sanding sealer on here. That's shellac base sanding sealer. It's called Zinzer Seal Coat. And it just kept soaking it up and soaking it up. And it has set now overnight. It actually helped quite a bit. And what I noticed is that, you know, I was going to return this. That, that was the point of putting the sanding sealer on here to give me a cleaner cut. But it, it's, it turned out to be pretty darn good. So what I did instead was, I should have turned the camera on, I guess. But I thought I was just experimenting. I, I sanded it with 80 grit instead of using my gouge. It's amazingly smooth. Now you can see here, this is the worst part right here. Up here it's 
uh, on the main body of the bowl, it's pretty darn good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. But this is bad. But I'm going to be turning a lot of that away. I'm going to just put a, uh, a little base for this to sit on right around here. So everything inside of that is going to be turned away until we get to our recess. And it is going to be a recess. I figured I get asked so many times why I don't use a recess. I guess I'll use a recess this time. So I'm going to turn a lot of that away up to my recess. And then I'll turn the inside of the recess away. Then we'll sand it and start over with sanding sealer. And I think we'll try a different finish than what I normally use on here. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Let me get my mask and face shield back on and we'll be turning at a thousand RPM. And it needs to be about a quarter inch bigger than the circle that I made for a recess. And it doesn't have to be really deep. About an eighth of an inch deep is all you need for a recess. And that's about what I have there. Now I'm just raising my tool rest so that I can use my recess tool that I have. And this will just put a dovetail on the inside of this recess. Yeah, that's just going to be, it's just going to be rough and punky, that's all. It'll improve some when I put my sanding sealer on there, but we can live with it. I think that's probably about all I need to do. So let's sand it up. I've gone back to my 80 grit. I'll sand up through 400 grit and I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put, uh, well, we'll probably put sanding sealer on again and then a new finish. See you in a bit. Well, I'm curious how this is going to turn out. I might have to brush into this punky area. It, it's hard. It's harder than it was. It's not soft anymore, but it still has little teeny weeny voids as you can see in it. So we'll just. We'll just see how it works. Kind of an experiment. And then for the final finish, I, I just want to be like the big kids that I see turning on YouTube. Some of my friends, what they use and how, how nice it looks when they get done. And again, this is the same sanding sealer I always use. Zinzer Seal Coat. Shellac based sanding sealer. And because I've already put on so much of it and a lot of it didn't sand all the way off, I think I'm only going to need one coat. I'll put on two if necessary, but I'll let you know. And I don't mind a little punkiness, you know. That's, that's the way it is inside the tree, right along with all this beautiful, beautiful spalting. So that's what it's going to look like. I think I will put on two coats. I'll put on two coats of this sanding sealer, and I'll bring you back here in a little bit, and we'll put on, put on a finish like the big kids do. See you in a bit. Well, I decided to apply the outside finish the same time as I do the inside. So we'll save that part. I have turned the piece around and mounted the recess onto the chuck. I'm going to use a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. We're going to be turning at 1150 RPM, mask and face shield on.
the way that was spinning, it looks like I'm about to go through the bottom, doesn't it? It looks like it's real thin, but it's just the uh, spalting. Scared me. Scared me. I'm going to check. Oh, got a ways to go. Whew. Man, that scared me. Okay, I can't do anything with that center in there. I'm going to switch to my negative rake scraper. I think it's still got a little bit of a burr on it. Let's find out. Not bad. Some punkiness in there, of course. I think I'm about as deep as I better go. Oh yeah. About 3 sixteenths in the bottom now. Yeah, we're good. Time for sanding. Now the lathe is spinning forward at about 325 and my drill is spinning forward. Now the lathe is spinning in reverse. My drill is spinning in reverse. Easy peasy. I'm starting at 80 grit. I'll work up through 400. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well this sanded up a lot nicer than I thought it was going to so hopefully we'll get a nice finish on the inside as well as the outside. I hope my regular viewers are not disappointed by this turning. It certainly is not what I normally do but it's just it's just what this piece needed. It couldn't really be much other than what it is I think. We're just letting the wood speak for itself here. So I can see this is going to take at least two coats of this sanding sealer. So that's what I'll do. Might even do three. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know. I did two on the outside. I'm trying to find some faces or some critters or something in here. I don't think you can see the one on this side here. I'll show it to you later. Kind of looks like a, a scary wolf, maybe. Werewolf, maybe. See you in a bit. I hope I haven't made too big of a deal out of this finish that I want to put on. <laughs> You've probably seen lots of people use it, including me. I've used it before, but I just, I don't have the opportunity to use it very often because of the kind of 
turnings that I do. I very seldom turn anything like this that's just round, that doesn't have voids, that doesn't have bark. And when, when I have those voids and bark, I cannot use uh, axe abrasive paste or, or the polishing paste. I see others use it. My good friend Gary uses it a lot. L lots of turners do. And uh, I'm envious of the finish they get using it. And it's food safe. That's, that's a good thing too. So I just have a paper towel here and I'm getting a a goodly amount on here and just gonna rub it in by hand like this for a bit now I did put three coats of sanding sealer on here and I was a little disappointed the third coat didn't seem to make any difference over the second coat so that's how I know when to stop when when you're not seeing any improvement and I'll do the outside as soon as I do the inside here okay now I'm gonna pick the speed up a little bit about 200 rpm and just rub that in there real good spread it around make sure I didn't miss anything you can hear the grit doing its job smoothing out that sanding sealer which is all that's on there sanding sealer no shellac Okay, that should be rubbed in there real good. Now I'm going to find a clean spot on my paper towel. I'm going to turn the speed up to about 800 RPM. And I'm going to buff that. Then I'm going to find another clean spot and buff that. And the idea, you just keep doing this until no more comes off on your paper towel. So I'm just refolding my paper towel to get another couple of clean spots here. Just about got it all it looks like. Well, uh, it sure feels a lot better, I can tell you that. It's smooth as silk now, wow. Wow, it really smoothed that right out. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the polishing restoring paste. I won't show it to you because it looks exactly the same. And then I'll do the outside and I'll be back and we'll take a look at this thing. I kind of like it. See you in a bit. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. I, I truly would. Thank you very kindly for that. Well, here it is. One weeping birch bowl in the books. Do you see anything in the in the wood, in the spalting? This is what I see here. I said I said there was something like a werewolf, werewolf head. You see that? I showed it to my son-in-law. He said it looks like a bird. So I, I love that. You know, we all see something different. What do you see? Do you see anything else? Do you see a bird? Do you see a werewolf? Do you see Italy, what do you see in there? Anything on the outside? It's uh, It feels real smooth, real nice. That axe abrasive stuff does a nice, nice job for us all. There's the bottom, I signed it. Weeping Birch. This was fun for me because, you know, I just don't get to get those kind of speeds up for turning. A lot of times I'm not over five or six hundred RPM or maybe eight hundred. This time I got up to over eleven, I think, or around eleven hundred. That was pretty nice. It just makes turning easy and kind of fun, kind of like being on vacation. I hope you like this piece. I liked making it for you. Thank you, Dave from Calmwood Creations, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please, I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos, as regular as I possibly can, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.